Let's start by inputting the data. If we press STAT and then ENTER, we can type the years into list 1. Now we'll press OVER and type the number of staghorn corals in list 2. To make a scatter plot, press second and y equals. This is our stat plot menu, and we'll press enter on plot 1. Press enter again to turn it on. It's already set to scatter plot, and we have our number of years as explanatory variables, and our number of staghorn corals in list 2, so we're good to go. Press zoom and 9, and here's our scatter plot. Now there's obvious curvature here. That suggests a linear model is not appropriate but it says find the least squares regression equation. So if we press STAT and we go to Calculate, Linear Regression, we'll leave this as List 1 and List 2, but where it says Store Regression Equation, I'm going to press VARS and go to YVARS, Function, and Y1. This is going to store our regression equation in Y1. All right, here's our least squares regression equation, and if I press Y equals, it's actually typed the equation into y1. So when I press graph, I can see that a linear model is not appropriate for this data set. Let's clear y1 and create our residual plot. To do that, press the stat button again and press edit. Now we need to calculate our expected number of staghorn corals for each year, and we have to use our least squares regression equation to do this. Press over and up to highlight list 3. This is our formula bar, and I'm going to press VARS, go down to statistics, go over to equation, and click regression equation. Now here's our regression equation, and all I'm going to do is replace the X with list 1, our year. What this will do is substitute each of our years into our least squares regression equation to find out what our predicted number of staghorn corals would be. There they are. Now to calculate the residuals, I'll go over to list 4 and highlight it, and residuals are observed, which is our list 2, minus expected, our list 3. So I'll write second 2 to access list 2, minus second 3 for list 3. All right, there's our residuals. Let's make our residual plot. If you press second and y equals, if you go back to your stat plot menu and go back to plot 1, all we need to do is change our Y list to list 4. This will keep our original explanatory variable as our X axis, and it will make our response variable, the vertical axis, our residuals. So I'll press zoom and 9, and here's our residual plot. And we can see this U or W shaped pattern. On this residual plot, the horizontal axis is our model. So what that means is, in the beginning years, our model tends to underpredict the number of staghorn corals. Then in the middle years, it overpredicted them. And finally, at the end, it was underpredicting them again. There's a pattern here. And what the pattern suggests is, a linear model is not the most appropriate. So let's copy down our least squares regression equation and sketch the residual plot. Let's look at our original scatter plot again. Now, it does have curvature, but it's difficult to tell if this is an exponential model or a power model. We can use transformations to determine this. If the relationship between year and the number of staghorn corals is exponential, if we take the log of our number of staghorn corals, our transform relationship should be linear. So let's try that out. Press the stat button and go back to your list. We don't need list 4 or list 3 again. So if you highlight the list and press clear and then down, it will clear your list. If you press the delete button, it will delete your list. I have a video on how to fix that. So we're going to highlight list 3 and we're going to take log of list 2. So I'll type log and then second 2. Let's see what that scatter plot looks like. So if I go back to my stat plot menu and I just changed my response variable to list 3 and press zoom, 9. All right, that's a little more linear. It still has some curves. Let's check the residual plot. So to calculate the residuals, we need the least squares regression equation for this transform data. So I'm going to press stat, calculate, and go back to linear regression, 
And I'm going to run a regression on list one and list three this time, my transform data. All right, there's my transform slope and transformed y-intercept. If I go back to my list, I can calculate my expected number of staghorn coral with the new model. To do this, I'm going to highlight list four and press vars again, go down to statistics, equation, regression equation, and I'm going to change this x to list one again. All right, here's the log of the expected number of staghorn coral. So now I need the residuals. So I'll take my observed, list three, and subtract list four. These are my residuals. Let's see what the residual plot looks like. We're gonna leave list one as our x-axis and change our y list to list five, our residuals. I'm gonna press zoom nine. Okay, it appears we did not achieve linearity. We still have a pattern in our residual plot, meaning our model can still be improved. So maybe a power model best describes the relationship between year and number of staghorn coral. Let's go back to our list. To do a power model transformation, we take the log of our response variable and our explanatory variable. So we already have the log of our response variable in list three. We need the log of our explanatory variable. So I'll highlight list four and I'll type log list one. All right, let's look at the scatter plot. So my explanatory variable is now in list four and my response variable is in list three. That looks roughly linear, but we need to investigate the residual plot. Let's start by running a regression on this transform data. So our X list is now in list four and our Y list is still in list three. Here's the least squares regression equation for our power model transformation. If we go back to our list and highlight list five, let's paste in that equation. So we'll press VARS, go down to statistics, equation, and regression equation. And this time we need to replace X with list four, our transformed explanatory variable. So these are our predicted, let's calculate our residuals. Our residuals are observed, which are list three, minus expected, our list five. And we can look at the residual plot by plotting list four against list six, our residuals. All right, this looks perfect. We have pretty much random scatter throughout the entire residual plot. That's what we're looking for. So it appears the best model for this data is a power model. So we'll say a power model transformation, log y equals a log x plus b, left us with a roughly linear scatter plot of the transform data and a residual plot with random scatter. So a power model seems to describe the relationship between years and number of staghorn coral best. Our least squares regression equation is our predicted log of number of staghorn coral equals 2.826 times the log of the year plus 0.35. And here's a sketch of our residual plot showing the random scatter. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.